Chair Professor Malto, yes, yeah. uh, Sami, the issue of the IPPs. No, I'll come there, but yes. first of all, I want to make the point that some of the submissions of Professor Malto are very unfair to the NDC. Oh, really? First of all, it's claimed that the NDC and MPP are always engaging in analysis of comparisons and all that. I don't know where he's getting that from. No NDC leader has held a lecture to compare any records based on statistical averages. The vice president holds a lecture and says that the economy today is far better than it was in 2016 and even seeks to blame our current economic woes on the XY regime. And if we come out to rebut that with facts, you say that we are guilty of the same thing. So what should we do? If Dr. Bagumia is lying about the unemployment rate, we should accept it. If we debunk that, we are engaging in comparisons. If you say that Ghanaians are not interested in comparisons, then you should be bold to call out Dr. Bawomia for engaging in comparisons. Not those of us who are pointing out to Dr. Bawomia and the good people of this country that what this man is telling you is not borne out by the facts. Then he says that um, um, we don't do research. Yes, research is important, but you see it is far-fetched from the econo economic malice we have on our hands today and what we are discussing today. We are not in this problem we, ha we are today because of lack of research. It is because of indiscipline. It is because of recklessness. It is because of ex excessive borrowing, and he knows that. And that is why he said that government must try and cut down on expenditure and all that. All the solutions he gave. Eh? If Professor Mauto has been in this country from 2017 till now, is he saying that he has not heard our ranking member for finance, Honorable Atu Forsen, raise these issues, propose these alternatives? Didn't he listen to his address at UPSA, his own institution, where we told this government that you are headed into the ditch, cut down on expenditure, cut down on the reckless borrowing. We started ringing this, this alarm bell in 2017. President Mahama has been talking about it. Adongo has been talking about it. Atu Forsen has been talking about it. Setekwe has been talking about it. I have been talking, all our communicators, we've been talking about that. And after they, they didn't listen to us, spent recklessly, borrowed recklessly, and have now plunged this country into a bottomless pit, you come and tell the opposition that you have not given them alternatives. What alternatives do you expect us to give again? Is managing an economy rocket science? Even a first-year economic student knows that the only way out of the economic quagma we find ourselves in is financial discipline. Reduce the borrowing and reduce the expenditure. You haven't heard the opposition say that? Please, we have not... No NDC politician has peddled the kind of, even a quarter of the kind of falsehood Bawumia has peddled in this but, country. Uh, we are uh, all not the same. Dr. So you, you, you Dr. academics... Dr. has questioned you on... I will come there. I will come there. Let me deal with one at a time. I'm saying that they should stop lumping us together. We didn't record deficit of 15.7% and a debt to GDP, rebased debt to GDP of 85% now, and, and heading to 90%. We didn't waste $100 million on the procurement of hand sanitizers and uh, uh, what face mask and Veronica backers. We didn't waste 55 million Ghana cities, equivalent to 550 billion old Ghana cities on kenke and uh, rice and fish for a few people in Kaswa, Kumase and uh, Accra during the three weeks of lockdown. We are not as wasteful as they are. Check the Auditor General's report. Check the total financial irregularities for 2017, 718 million. That is for public corporations and bodies like that. 780 million for 2016. They promised to protect the public press. In 2020, what was the figure? 12.2 billion. In the last four years, we've lost over 34 billion to financial sector irregularities and all that. Are we the same? Why do you, neutrals and academics, keep lumping all of us together and making arguments that are not based on facts? So please, those submissions of yours, I disagree with and I submit are very unfair to the NDC. Now to what Dr. Kuboy said. Your, and you see, he was very condescending and, you know, very, what he said was very offensive, but I'm not going to respond to that because he said, uh, if we cannot read or if we are not complicated in the mind, Dr. Bawumia gave us bad chats. Yeah, that was very insulting. But he's my brother, and so I will not respond in equal measure. But just to tell him that if he had read well, he would have seen that Dr. Bawumia, what he did was cherry-picking. What he did 
was statistical gymnastics that doesn't reflect the real unemployment rate of today. This is what Dr. Babumi has said, page 61, paragraph 2. As shown in figure 16, the robust growth in GDP has led to a decline in total unemployment. Jifa, listen to me carefully. Based on World Bank data, the average unemployment rate in Ghana between 2014 and 2016, how many years? Three years. 2014, one. 2015, two. 2016 which stood at 6.29, declined to an average of 4.3% between 2017 and 2020. 2017 to 2020 is how many years? 2017, 2018, 2019, 24 years. And Doc says this is correct. Do you compare? Yes, we, we use averages for economic analysis. This is 14 to 16. Read well. You, you are accusing people of not reading. No, no, no. Read well. I know... I know that some Read well. were the same. Some okay, don't provoke me. Mr. Jevi, you've it's gone into No, no, the, please, I've not gone there. Let me deal with the issue. The point is that 2014 to you don't compare three years statistical averages to four years. And I'm saying that you are talking about unemployment rate now having reduced. Where is the 2021 figure? Because we are in 2022. Why are you? World Bank has figures for 2021. If Dr. Bawomia is an honest politician and was not engaged in cherry picking, where is the unemployment rate for 2021, which is the latest? And Dr. Mauto says he has not seen it. Well, I will show no, it to you. Please, I didn't say that. Please, I've, I've not no, shown no, it to the you. The document you showed me. Yes. Did okay, so I will show you another document. What, what is this document? <laughs> what is this document? This is the Ghana Web publication reporting what the employment minister told Ghana Parliament Web. on <laughs> theft, <laughs> including <laughs> graphic online. You are quoting sources. You go, go. Master graphic He's online. You are quoting word You are. You are. You don't, yeah. stop. No, but he's stop, referring stop, to, stop displaying your ignorance. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Isn't he referring to a Listen to the story. National unemployment rate stands at 13.44% employment minister. This is dated 10th March 2022. Ignatius Bafuwa, Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, says Ghana Living Standard Survey, uh, 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 survey Round 7 estimated national unemployment rate to be 8.4% in 2019. Remember that in 2016, unemployment rate was 5.45%. This is it. 2016, Mahama, 5.45%. Okay, 2019, before COVID, 8.4%. Then listen to him again. He said in 2021, population centers put the labor force, which was the economically active population of 15 years and older, at 11.5 million, a little over that. Adding that out of the figure, 9.9 .9 million were unemployed. This puts the unemployment rate at 13.44%. Where is that figure? Okay. So if your, your, your vice president has lied, that total unemployment has reduced today, and he's comparing four-year averages with three-year averages, and he has conveniently left out the latest unemployment rate, is he not a pathetic liar? So, no, 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 Sammy, let's not uh, continue using those phrases. Again, Jifa, if you, you can I have shown you. He's inaccurate. Let's not use the Those are the semantics. Airways. Okay. So, anyway, but you've dwelt a lot on unemployment. Jifa, I have rebuttals to make you allow him to flow, allow oh, him no, to flow. Oh, no, no. I so beg you. See, I beg you, you. No, my point is... I will deal with the can excess you capacity allow charge. <laughs> Yes, I will deal with that because Dr. Mauto, you allowed him to flow. You allowed the cool boy to flow. I have things to rebut, allow me I to flow. I get you, but you've already made talked a point. about I'm unemployment coming. already. I am done with unemployment. I don't want you to I'm repeat. done with unemployment. Then did I hear Dr. Kuboy says we should not engage in comparisons between Ghana and Francophone countries? Oh, really? Mm -hmm. So is he suggesting that Dr. Bawumia was daft when throughout this speech he compared Ghana to Cote d'Ivoire? Oh, he hasn't read this speech. You see, these people, they think they are more intelligent than all of us. But they keep making a mockery of themselves. From this speech, page 1 to page 129, Baomia compared Ghana to even the USA more than 10 times. And, am I lying? And Cote d'Ivoire. Is Cote d'Ivoire not a Francophone country? Even when you were in opposition, candidate a Kufuado, then you always compared Ghana to Cote d'Ivoire. Today, you are saying we shouldn't compare Ghana to Franco. Okay, Nigeria is not a Francophone country. In 2020, their budget deficit was 5.8%. Yours was 15.7 times three of that. Are you not reckless? Did COVID affect Ghana more than it affected Nigeria? They lived within their means. They didn't spend recklessly for election purposes like you did. So is Nigeria to a franco flown country? You see how disingenuous you are. Then they say that um, 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 Baumia is not cooking figures. I've shown you that the Ghana statistical services don't com compare inflation rates. He did that. And even... The current inflation rate is higher than what we bequeath to him. Deficits. You've been lying. That deficit has been, has been below 5% before 2020. You go to the IMF for a rapid credit facility of $1 billion. And because you know that if you lie to the IMF, you'll be fined, you tell them the truth. That deficit for 2019 
was 7.2 percent meaning that even before covid you had exceeded the legal threshold of five percent per the fiscal responsibility act this is the document you gave the IMF, and you are sitting on TV to the line that oh, Muntaka and Harry no, 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 no. He explained no, not even about the Honourable Muntaka and Harry. He explained that they did that below they the line. So when they went to IMF, why didn't they do below the line? So when we came, so when you did, you have done, you've been in the media for a long time. When we took office in two thousand and nine, and GCB and Tor were on the verge of collapse, and we had to solve that problem. Were we treating that debt, that Tor debt and GCB debt, as below the line? So why is it that when they went to the IMF, they didn't do that below the line analysis and they told them the truth? Then he sit on TV and lies again no, that the no, primary no, no. balance, mm -hmm. he peddles falsehood. You, you like semantics. I will uh, use, like I will semantics. use the words you like. Because no, a lie is a lie. But Listen, no, let's, no, when you were saying we were not complicated in their mind, you didn't say no, no, no. no. Let, let me make my point. He sits on TV and says they've been recording primary balance, positive primary balance for three years. The same old cooked figures that has been discredited. This is the document they presented to the IMF. Primary balance for Ghana, 2018, negative 1.35. 2019, negative 1.65. 2020, negative 9.29. 2021, negative 6.47. What does this mean? Once you are running a negative primary balance, it means you are borrowing to service your debts. And this is the true state of our economy. Now the issue of excess capacity, I'll come back to COVID-19. Dr. Babomian says, oh, the reason why our economy is in such a mess. One of the reasons. One of the reasons. It's not just because of COVID, <laughs> but excess capacity. Because his government has spent 17 billion CDs on excess capacity charges alone from 2017 to 2020. I want to show you that this man is dishonest. No, 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 no. This no. is... Oh, so what this I is, want to Hold raise, on. I'm glad... No, so Can I respond? Oh. I'm making my submission. This is the raise, parliamentary hands up. Okay. So that of, was what I wanted of us to refer to. 17 June 2019, I mean 2021. Prof. Honorable Suhini, MP for Tamale, not ask the finance minister a question. Mr. Speaker, the, no. Uh, Mr. Speaker, he wanted to ask the finance minister for, I mean, information of which independent in power, independent power producing companies have received payment from government of Ghana for excess capacity charges mm -hmm. and how much was paid to each company mm -hmm. in the last four years. Yes. Then the finance minister responds, Mr. Speaker, the underlisted independent power producers has received payment for excess capacity charge for the period under review 2017-2020, totaling $937.50 million. AXA, the, was it the breakdown is as follows, AXA $347 million, Car Power $359, Sam Power Two thirty-one. The total is nine hundred and thirty-seven point five million dollars mm -hmm. in CD equivalent. Even if you are going to use um, a CD rate of six Ghana cities, you won't get more than six billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Where did Doctor Bawumia? You said the date is seventeenth June twenty twenty-one. The latest communication by the Minister of Finance, okay. who you claim supplied Bawumia with the information and the figures he put out. Twenty twenty-one. Forget about the lies you peddled in 2020 that you were paying $500 million every year in excess capacity charges and you had paid $12 billion. When he appeared before the people's representatives where he knew that lying could have consequences, he told the truth that no, it is only $937 million. Then Baumia comes one year after and tells Guineans that they have paid $17 billion. It's a lie. And even this $937 million. So he asks a follow-up question. Check the hands up. That means the minister... How many megawatts of power are you describing as SS? The finance minister couldn't answer. He said he will get back to parliament till date he hasn't gone there. Okay, but that's because, obviously in the domain of the energy minister. But the, he, he promised to get back to parliament mm -hmm. and he has not gotten back to parliament because you know why. What they are even describing as SS power is not SS power. Valco is not running. B5 is asking for more power. They are operating at 40% capacity because they don't have power. They have even given Greco and VAT a loan of eight million dollars for them to give them power. Napo is calling for Ghana to generate more power. You claim to be to, to have an industrialization agenda, one district, one factory, and you are talking about excess power. Tell us the amount of megawatts of power that is excess as we see we, we speak today. What they are doing is that ECG has been making technical and commercial losses in the last three years. Also, they've been tariff shortfalls as a result of their reducing electricity bills in 2018, but not paying for that debt. To ECG so that ECG can pay the IPPs. They are putting all that together and they are calling that excess capacity. Okay. And that is why they can't give the breakdown. Okay, so Again, they me, keep talking just, about the banking let me sector. Just give, so Northern mm -hmm. Electricity Distribution Company, for instance, as of last mm -hmm. year, 
we are learning that they uh, recorded a net loss of some 379 million. Yes. Then we also and they put have, all together and they say it's excess capacity. Have, okay. If but, is, so, so, but, but, what, no, but what I want to raise is I'm told that there's a difference between excess capacity and idle capacity. What I'm learning from the IPPs is that they are being paid for idle capacity because if you contract an IPP to construct a 200 megawatt plant mm -hmm. and you take only 100 megawatt of their power, obviously they are not going to pay for the excess 100. So it, I understand see, that it, that it, is a lot of what we, idle are because for, see, because what we are paying for. You see, do you know how they come by this whole excess capacity thing? They compare the power being produced by the IPPs, their capacity, okay? So they, they, don't, they, look, they use installed capacity vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis why we are buying mm -hmm. from them. But you don't use installed capacity. You use available capacity. Because Akosobo may have a capacity, installed capacity of about 1,000 megawatts, but they operate or produce 600 to 800 megawatts. So this whole thing about excess capacity is a bare-faced lie, and we must call a spade a spade and not dig into. Now they complain about, oh, we've spent another 25 billion on the banking sector, and that is why the economy is in the mess. That is why the price of cassava has gone up. You see, Dr. Koboy says sachet water has gone up because the sachet rubber is made from hydrocarbons. So the hydrocarbons, they've gone up where? No, the price of crude so has what gone about up. Mace? So when you oh, so what about maize? Also, what about maize? 170. Yeah, but you need, fertilizer. You need fertilizer to grow maize. What about so cassava? You don't need fertilizer to grow cassava. What about cassava? But you cut it. What about yam? You, so you, you, you see, any government you that keeps giving excuses for their own failing six years after being in office, including blaming the XY regime, is a useless regime. You've been in office for six years. You've had more revenue than any government. Trade oil fails. You borrowed more than any government. Look at all the COVID-related inflows you've had. And you keep on blaming the XY regime and making excuses for your failings. What is that? Okay, now they are even saying that now they are even saying that freight has been going up. And the NDC freight didn't go up. And the NDC freight stood stagnant for eight years. Certainly is that your it argument? It wasn't stagnant, but it didn't go up for three, four, five, four. My, my sister, you take your victim as you have it. He's a law student, he understands that. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> they have not recorded. A collapse in commodity prices like we recorded in 2015. Gold came down drastically on the international market. Break nations experienced a meltdown. Oil came down from a projected $9,900 to less than $40. We grew the economy by 3.6% nonetheless when South Africa, Nigeria, Angola all recorded recessions. And they still blame us and criticize us for recording a growth of only 3.6%. Okay. When we didn't even produce oil for the greater part of that year 2016, then you are saying that, oh, we have also had challenges, but discount those challenges. Do you discount our challenges okay, so, from the economic uh, position we bequeath to you? So please, banking help, sector, me, help please. me clean up the banking sector. Listen, then. That'll be your final point. No, it's not my final point. Oh, if please, I, when when it gets to me, you stampede me, interjections oh, and all that. Allow me to flow. Jeff, when Okoboy please. was saying you didn't ask in it, let me make oh, my point. I beg really? you. I, I can finish in, the, in just four minutes. Okay. Four banking minutes sector. Jifa, you take office, inherit a financial and insurance sector that was growing in 2016 at 8.1%. And you claim that that sector was collapsing. Don't they understand statistics? They didn't say Growth of eight, No, but when I said it in this speech, I know what I'm talking about. That the financial sector we bequeathed to them was on the verge of collapse. I'm saying that that sector grew by 8.1% in 2016. So that claim is a lie. Now some of those banks were challenged. Because of bad corporate governance practices, some of the directors had misconducted themselves. And we said, look, you don't have to throw the baby away with the uh, bathwater. And that you can deal with those corrupt directors and shareholders without necessarily destroying these banks. You can save these banks and financial institutions with just about 5 to 10 billion and protect about 50,000 jobs. They said, no, we will collapse the banks by borrowing 25 billion to pay depositors. Eh? And we don't even care if 57,000 people will lose their jobs. So they borrow 25 billion, collapse the banks, 57,000 people have lost their jobs. They've said they've paid the customers, use it as campaign for all the credit and the products they can get from that. And if that has had a negative effect on the economy, you say, oh, it is because of that. You had an option, you could have saved the banks. Indians Bank would not have gone down if you had paid the contractors who owned, who, who owned him, who he supported. 
The first bank will not have gone down. And by the way, let me tell you something, Prof. You may not know this. Do you know that among the banks they collapsed was a solvent bank, Heritage Bank. Solvent bank. They did never defaulted in paying one of their customers. Heritage Bank was a solvent bank. You collapse solvent banks because of politics. Because you claim said Wagongo, the main shareholder, is an NDC man. I who got money from Cocoa Board? I don't that, know. That, that was the reason. Go and read the Bank of Ghana statement. They said that, that the money he I, used. What I know is that oh. there was a concern about meeting the requirements, and there was no, a no, no. view. No, there was a view that they could not be sure about where the funds no, to support no. the let, let, me, bank let me remind you. Came from I know that very because, clearly. Yes, because let me tell you what it was. Global. They said that the funds he used in establishing the bank, that minimum capital, came from proceeds of contracts he did for cocoa board and that since he was being prosecuted in court in relation to those contracts they are um, uh, um, they are revoking his license when any criminally accused person should be presumed innocent unto proven guilty and so now if said wagongo is acquitted by a cause what would you have done to him you have destroyed the sovereign bank you collapsed construction bank who launched construction bank construction bank was launched in 2017 by dr bawomia and addison how can you blame that on president Mahama? So what you are saying about the banking sector crisis is neither here nor there. Now you, they you say that. Now they say that. Now they say that. You dispute that. that potentially the view of analysis that if we had continued supporting the banks because they were getting support from the Bank of Ghana anyway. And yeah. I know there have been critics who say that there are people at the Bank of Ghana whose heads should have also rolled yes. for, the, for the lack of but enforcement. But, if I, but if I, that's the difference There's between John Mahama and President Kufuado. Even though Capital not, Bank, even though the board do. of Capital Bank was chaired by a known MPP sympathizer, uh, Reverend Utabel, a man I respect so far, uh, so much, and, and, and the rest. We gave them money. So if they misuse the money, what you can say is that go after them. Are you getting me? But you can't say that President Mahama was wrong in bailing out banks all across the world. No, I don't think anyone has said President that Mahama That is what you are saying. Wrong. Didn't no, you? Were you not listening no, to Okoboy? No, sir. What he said, and uh, oh. he can correct me if I'm wrong, is that government made an effort to save the banks. Yes. But the banks... Uh, Not they, all the banks. Okay. The banks. Heritage Bank was solvent. Okay. Construction so, Bank so came and the example them. That Let's not put the issues who, together. Hold on. He if, gave the if, example. If, 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 if Unibank Mr. had been Jeffrey, paid, they are yes, they would not have collapsed. Let's talk about... That funds were provided. Yet, they continued in their same reckless behavior. They didn't change their now, 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 on COVID. Didn't Dr. Bawumia say in this speech... That despite COVID, this government has recorded an increase in revenue by 20% annually. 25%. Didn't he say that? Oko, didn't he say that? Yet he said that we did three weeks of lockdown. And uh, we had closed the airports. We had closed. In spite of that, you got more tax revenue than you even got before COVID. 2019, tax revenue was $42 billion. 2022, now COVID war. 45.3 billion 2021 with COVID still in the system 55 billion so what was the net effect of this COVID-19 you keep blabbing about using as a whipping boy for your own mismanagement on even revenue the real sector before COVID 2016 under John Mahama the man you call the incompetent one manufacturing a very important sector to emerge emerging economies grew by 7.9% in 2019, before COVID, it had declined to 6.5%. Before COVID, the construction sector, which is a measure, the growth of the construction sector, which is a measure of how you are investing in capital expenditure, grew by 8.4% in 2016. In 2019, before COVID, negative 8.5%. Or oh, the economy, listen, this is what the World Bank country director, who is not Sami Jeffy, has told you. Be truthful to Ghanaians. The economy is very bad. World Bank to government. And the relevant portion says, I quote the World Bank director, is it a, re a really serious situation? Well, the numbers speak for themselves. The situation is very serious. Then he says, at the World Bank, we have not hidden the fact when we have held discussions with government officials and even the head of states that Ghana faces a very tough road ahead. Then they says that, he says that, yes, COVID has not helped. But even before COVID-19, there were signs that the situation was getting bad. This is the World Bank country director. Then I have shown you that with regards to the depreciation of the city, 
Doc, you are the professor here. If I'm lying, you can interject and say I'm lying. COVID helped you to stabilize the city because COVID reduced the demand for dollars. And that is why before COVID, 2019 city had depreciated 12.9. But with COVID, CD depreciated 3.8 because nobody was important like we're importing before COVID. And 2021, CD depreciated 4.1. Again, they talk about... Your four minutes um, is um, up, oh, please. Oh, Jifa. They talk about, they, they talk about taxation. Please. Stop, stop so, interjecting. So please, your they stop, final I didn't interject you once. We'll take a break and I'll they talk Dr. about Oko moving Oko. us from taxation to production. Okay? And... You listen to the claims they make so, so... Oh, are you problem. moving on to a new point? Okay, if, 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 if... So you if, hold that no, one. Okay, then let's let me... Let, let, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then let me conclude on the point about COVID-19 and the figures. But if you are waiting for him... He made a point. No, no listen, so, he made a point. No, if you don't want me to go into it. another area, when you come, I'll go into the taxes and the other later. areas. But this is what he said. They say that because the minority has not sought to censor the finance minister based on a breach of the fiscal responsibility act which said that they should be disciplined live within their means and not go beyond the budget deficit of five percent mm -hmm. then it means that every figure they peddled before we caught them pants down in 2020 when they went to the imf was correct that logic is tantamount to the logic which says that atai has been robbing people in ghana but until his arrest prosecution and conviction he was not a thief listen there is no expiry date for crime. You guys had cooked figures and concealed figures that really reflected the real state of the economy for three years. It took the IMF to expose you. It doesn't mean that if we have not raised those matters before the floor, we cannot raise them tomorrow because there is no time limitation to these issues. So, Jiva, because you don't want us to go into other areas, I will pause here and say that, look, we are in this mess because of the reckless expenditure they engage in in 2020 and 2021 and the excessive borrowing the problem we have on our hands is not because of COVID or any war or any excess capacity charge what Ghanaians are expecting from their leaders is candor and leaders who are ready to accept responsibility and say you know what we are going to now cut expenditure in truth the president will stop flying in hyper expensive private jets at a high expense to the already impoverished Ghanaian taxpayer. Okay. We are going to reduce you, the borrowing much, and manage Sammy. the economy well. Stop making COVID 19 and the war, which commenced only one month, two weeks ago, your weapon boy for your own economic failings. All right, thank you very much, Sammy JV.